you ever read a book and then you go see the movie and you're like, well, that was entirely different than the book. What happened? Well, the fact is, is that movies are a different medium than books are. Likewise, teaching remotely is very different from teaching in person. So we need to think about brain science. We need to think about tips and tricks, and we have to completely reinvent the wheel when we're teaching an online class. So in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna show you some ideas to get you thinking about how you can structure your online classes. And, and hopefully this will get your brain juices flowing and you'll have some great ideas for your own online classes. So what I'm going to talk about in this series as we rise to the challenge of teaching remotely is the pillars that you need to base your class on. We'll talk about basic philosophy of brain science in the next video. And then the next video after that, we'll have some brainstorming ideas for games. And then the last video will be connecting with students, student buy-in and enlisting the parents. So your first pillar might be an online textbook, if you're lucky enough to have one. Um, maybe though, you might find your online textbook is a little lacking because maybe it just doesn't suit your purposes or whatever. That's okay. You can still use it because an online textbook, any textbook, even one that you have in your hand, it's a roadmap. It basically tells you where to go, but you don't have to follow it like a slave. You can pick and choose stuff out of it. Okay, so if your online textbook can't quite actually be shoehorned into what you're doing online, use what you will out of it. Um, you know, use it for, hey, this is the order I want to go in, or use it for, I like this thing, but not this thing. Pick and choose what you want out of it. Now I'd like to talk to you about what my pillars are with my online classes. Um, I've got four pillars. I've got Duolingo. And I love Duolingo, you know that now. I've got the whole channel where we uh, we talk about how to use Duolingo for schools. And you know why I love Duolingo there. Um, Quizlet, I use a lot. Um, I do have an episode in Look No Feather talking about uh, using Quizlet to support Duolingo. But Quizlet, of course, is basically the king of online flashcards. We'll talk about Quizlet more in a second. Peaksay kind of really filled in the gaps for me during that crazy COVID year. Peaksay is a listening and speaking game, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a moment. And then my fourth pillar was I would always make the students listen to a song every week because songs are lovely, repetitive things, and the students can sing at the top of their lungs in their bedrooms, and um, they're, they're at least memorizing some vocabulary and getting used to the cadences of the language. So for more on Quizlet, we did make an episode of Look No Feather, How to Use Duolingo for Schools. That was episode 6D. What other websites can I pull in to support Duolingo? But just a really quick recap. Um, you can make your own Quizlet sets. Chances are somebody else has already made a set that uh, you could really make good use out of. Um, and then I do pay extra for a Quizlet Plus, which lets me track my students. Okay, so I can see at a glance, okay, here we are, we're, we're on Conjugate Pouvoir. This is what they've done so far. You know, I can tell this, this student needs to get a little kick in the patoozy to get moving. And uh, these ones are doing fine. This one started this, but didn't finish it. So um, it's, it's a good way for me to track my students and I can put that in as a grade if I want. All right, let me take you over to Peaksay right now and I'll explain Peaksay. Peaksay is spun off of Fluent U and I did talk about this in the um, Look No Feather video also, but basically um, it's a listening conversation game and there's all these conversations that uh, users like myself have put on here. You can probably find something that fits your curriculum, but it's great listening exercise and speaking exercise also. 
some absolutely essential tools you're going to need. You need an interactive whiteboard program. Now there's a lot of interactive whiteboards. You, I know you can't see my fingers doing the little air quotes here. They'll say it's an interactive whiteboard, but the fact of the matter is, is what they mean is different users can take control over it, but not everyone can use it at the same time. You do not want your students sitting there being passive, waiting for another student to have their turn. Your students are gonna fall asleep in front of their computers. So find yourself an interactive whiteboard where everyone can work at the same time. All right, one, uh, this one right here is InVision. Don't know what happened with my mouse there. Uh, InVision is perfectly good um, in a pinch. You can use, uh, like if you're using Zoom, there'll be an annotate button, like three buttons over by your name at the top of, uh, Madame Sensei is now screen sharing. Click on the three buttons at the top and then you can annotate and then all your students can type at the same time. And that's super fun. They can, they can write all over the screen. They can draw all over the screen. Um, that's, that's pretty good. And of course you've got your chat box your chat box is a little more limited, but at least it gives a name stamp on it so you can see who's doing it. But basically before showtime, test out your whiteboard and make sure it's an interactive whiteboard that all your students can use at the same time. You need some kind of video recorder. Now your phone is probably good enough. Your computer probably, your computer obviously has a camera and a voice recorder on it. You could use Flipgrid, Flipgrid is fine and um, that will allow you to sort your students a little bit better. Um, in a pinch, just go into your Zoom classroom or your Team classroom or your Google Meets and um, turn on your recorder and speak to the camera and then you've recorded yourself. And we'll talk in a later episode about how you can use these recordings to their best effect. All right, so in our next episode, we're gonna talk about the basic philosophy about brain science and um, what things you should be uh, gearing towards and how you should be uh, designing your lessons so that you get maximum bang for your buck with your students.